Welcome back to another episode of the Twilight Brigade. Our adventuring party, consisting of Sir Adir, Oliver, and Taldama, have been tasked with saving the land of Fadir from the goddess Shar and her werewolf-led army of the night. Ooh. After traveling to the city of Akith and meeting a number of interesting individuals and getting to pet an owl bear, much to the happiness of Sir Adir, uh, the heroes learned about Wolfsbane, a plant capable of poisoning the werewolves. They brought this information to the king and queen and have a few days left before the assault the assault on the castle of the Sanguine Saints. And that's where we left off, so let's jump right in. So we've got a, a, a team here uh, assembled if you would like to meet them. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're free to help out wherever you feel like you can lend a hand and we'll keep working. Is there still a great big hole in the tower? Yeah, yeah, we, we patched the one on the side leading into the dungeon. Um, there's still one up on the roof that we've, or on the top floor that uh, we're in the middle of repairing. Alright, I'm gonna go help out there. Mm, what are the rest of you doing? Um, are we just gonna, like, spend the day here? I'll go help the blacksmith out. Oliver? Help, uh, just kind of tidying things up and doing kind of, like, uh, whatever, like, basic woodwork or, like, uh, like, you know, little jobs here and there need, that need to be done. Some of the tedious stuff, perhaps. Has construction begun on the modest temple of all the gods no okay we'll uh we'll mention that to them to put into the plans so at least it will get uh built but uh we'll make everything livable so that people can be living in it and safe first and then then we start designating <coughs> the rooms and stuff into specific types of things so taldama heading up to the roof and the top floor where you fought the vampire and the beholder you find a couple of dwarves working away, hauling stone up and putting it in place to fix the wall first, and then they'll start work on the on the roof itself. And as you get to that floor, one of the dwarves turns and looks at you, and it is a male dwarf covered in dust, just rocky sediment, um starting to bald on top of his head but has this giant bushy beard and says looks at you and says Oi, what what you doing here? I'm here to help out with the patching of the wall. Yeah, I know way your way know your way around rock? I do. Mm. Probably more so than you do. Oh really? Do you want to bet on it? <laughs> yeah. Ten gold. Fair enough. All right, let's see what you can do. All right. What would you like me to do, Chuck? You know, I'm, I'm going to leave it up to you how you want to impress and All show right. off to this uh, this dwarf. Okay, so he here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spider climb my way back down to the ground. Just, just down <laughs> the side of the wall. Okay. And then I'm going to mold earth, uh, like stone columns. And then I'm going to dye the hands boards every, like, where they would be every floor, and basically rapidly construct a scaffold back up to, up the side of the tower, back to the place with the hole in the wall. You quickly build this scaffold of stone and wood, and as you get to the top, the last column, you're just standing on it, arms folded as it lifts you up to his eyeline, and he's just standing there, mouth dropped, 
and this look of mostly admiration across his face. And he's already got um, 10 coins in his hand and, and hands it over and says, all right, well, um, you're gonna put me out of business at this rate, but uh, we might get to go home early. There's another project after we're done with this. You're not gonna be getting away so so easily. <laughs> All right, well, um, where do you want to begin? How about this great blade gaping hole in the wall? You sure? I thought you wanted a sunroof or something. Do I seem like the kind of person who would need to see the sunshine? Yeah, you know, I, I prefer underground myself, so I much respect. I'm, uh, I'm Boldrick, by the way. Is this someone else? Oh, Boldrick, yeah, Garvin Longtooth was the half orc. This is Boldrick the Dwarf. Boldrick the Dwarf. Ah, uh, okay. So he's like the foreman of the of the stonemasons. Yep. Okay. So I will spend that time... You can tell because he has a hard hat and a clipboard. Uh, <laughs> he's, not doing, he's not doing any real work himself. I, I will spend the time um, moving the stones up from the supply place in the ground to help them just more rapidly get them up there and then they can place them. Okay. I'm imagining you're like morphing the walls themselves into like hands and like grab the boulder and just pass oh. them up to each other. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you know what? I was just, I was just going to like toss launch them like, like she does in uh, Avatar and Last Airbender, but that is so much cooler. Yes, I think exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. Oh, that's awesome. The day goes by with you helping out and the hole gets patched pretty quickly and they start to move their way down from that area, fixing the hole in the floor that you had come up that ramp to get to that final floor. Um, with your help, the top floor itself is finished by the end of the day, which they thought was gonna take probably a two or three day job at least. So, um, moving to Radir, heading to the blacksmith, you enter and you can see a thin but very muscular uh, half-elf working on the forge. Um, very short, almost uh, buzzed hair, very clean-shaven. Um, as you enter, he looks up at you and just kind of stares. Hello, uh, just wondering if I can be of any assistance. Do you know a lot about uh, blacksmithing? Um, I'm not in incredibly skilled in the art itself, but uh, I can work the bellows and that such thing for you. I mean, if you want, I, I don't want to be a bother. No, I'm happy to help. Okay, well, um, the bellows are over there, and you can just, you know, do do what you need, do what you want. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Torin. Uh, yeah, good to meet you, I guess. I'm Sir Redeer, so, yeah, pleasure to meet you. And he just goes back to working on his tools. Cool. I'll just <laughs> assist as best I can. I'll work the bellows. I'll, you know, help with the, you know, the putting stuff in buckets of water and whatnot to cool things down. You know. Yeah. Just wherever I can be helpful. Yeah. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours, and he does eventually start to converse with you a little bit, but for the most part, he is just working away, and when somebody walks in to grab a tool or something, he he, he looks at you and and just kind of slinks off into the back. So he disappears when someone comes in to, like, grab stuff? Not disappears, but just as long as you're there and talking, he's gonna try and hide from conversation. Alright, I mean, are the tools and stuff he's making at least... Uh, it seemed to be well made. Yeah, he's very good at what he's doing. He just okay. doesn't. <laughs> he is shy. He is the embodiment of leave me alone, let me work, and I will be in the corner if you need me. Okay. I'll do my best not to, uh, like, infringe on that and make him uncomfortable while still being helpful. Yeah. And and eventually, after, like I said, after a while, he does start to open up a little bit, and, um, you know, you get... You make some small talk. It's awkward, but overall, it's, uh, you know, your disarming nature definitely puts him at ease. Um, and so you're, 
yeah, you work for the day and get to get to see that he's quite adept at repairing tools at, you know, um, skilled in all sorts of stuff. He's making some swords. He's making mostly, you know, hammers and, and various wood carving and stonemason type tools, but seems to be a jack of all trades for um, the stuff. I want to, I want to ask him then uh, once the things are more comfortable. Um, I, I, I was curious. I have a special project in mind that I thought maybe you could help me with. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what do you need? I want to armor my horse. I want to put some barding on him. But I will specify that he is a pegasus, so it needs to be light enough that he can still fly and carry someone, but enough to give him a little bit of protection. And you'll need space for the wings to, to move. Yes, of course, of course, yes. And light armor, but strong enough to carry, but durable enough to protect. I, I mean, it, it would take some time and some doing, but that's something that I could work on, I guess. You, yeah, if, if you could, that'd be amazing. Would Garvin be okay with it? I, I don't want to, you know, disrupt the work that needs to be done. Um... I'll, I'll let him know that this is uh, that you're doing this for me, and, and he'll definitely make sure that you're that it's okay. But um, by no means do you need to put off your normal work for it. It can be just like a little side project. Oh well, that that sounds kind of fun. I'd, I'd like to work on that. I think. Well, excellent. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Garvin and just you know, square that all away for oh, you. Well, thank thank you for talking to him and, and making sure it's okay. I I will get on that, and well, we'll I'll I'll let you know if if I get that job done. Excellent, yeah. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see, uh, it's, it's, uh, my, his, my horse's name is Bonavis. He's just, uh, you know, hanging out in the courtyard. It's very friendly. If you want to go, you know, meet him and take some measurements and whatnot. Yeah, I, um, I kind of noticed him when you came in. Uh, that's a Pegasus, and that's not something we see very often. So I, I may have taken a few glances um, when you first came in, and I'll, I'll, I'll go and do that after the the shift is done. Cool. And I'll, I'll telepathically tell Barnabas that, um, hey, the blacksmith is probably going to come take some measurements. We're going to get you some armor. Um, he's really shy, so just be, be be nice and gentle with him. You get a response back of, I'm going to spook him. Please, please don't. I'm going to spook him. <laughs> Barnabas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not very <laughs> celestial of you. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt him, but I'm going to spook him. Wow. Just, just, <laughs> he's, he's very, very shy. Like, like be, be, uh, be careful. I'm not going to hurt him. If oh you spook God. him, but then, but then be like super friendly and gentle afterwards. So he knows it was just a spook. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Part of this <laughs> Oh my God. Why is my horse... <laughs> Chaotic. It, so wait a second. It, I, I, what kind of what kind of grass is growing here? Because I'm getting a feeling that it's a little bit of something non nor non traditional. I've been slipping in some Pegasus net. Ross said he's going on a darker path. <laughs> he's seen some things, man. He's just having some fun. Whatever. It's like, do you remember that time, Sir Deer, that you let those people stab me to death? He doesn't remember. Chuck established that the, the summoned creatures, they, as a mercy in case they die in the material world, they don't remember the last, like, 20, 30 seconds. Ah. Uh, I forgot about that little, uh... Taking after Papa. That using athletics. Mercy caveat. Okay. I do like it, though. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's that's most of your day. Uh, at at the... As uh, the workday winds down, you do watch as Torin goes out to get some measurements, and as he approaches, Barnabas' wings just expand and flap once really hard, and you just hear a yelp, and all of a sudden he's Torrens on the ground, and he's just looking at it like, oh boy, um, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna stomp on me, at which point Barnabas just wings fold up, and he, um, kneels onto the ground and gets really low for Torrin. Moving over to Panda and Oliver, 
All right, you find a half elf, long brownish hair, tied in a very neat um, braided ponytail. Um, the late twenties looking ish relative to the half elf age, um, dressed in very outdoorsy clothes, very lots of browns, earth tones, good for moving around in the woods. And she is moving lumber from one area to another. And every now and then she goes and restokes the zombie fire. As you approach, she, she looks at you and says, uh, yeah, how can I help you? No, I'm uh, one of the owners here and uh, we were helping um, make sure everything was um, in a livable state. Well, we are here for a short time, so I was wondering if you needed any help. Yeah, I mean, are you good with your hands? Are you good at working? I don't want you wasting my time, but if you want to help, I'm not going to turn you down. I was, a, I was a, a farmhand for several years, so I know my way around a little bit, and uh, if you're burning things, I can help with that too. Fair enough. You're going to be working with the mask on. It's going to get hot. I'm used to it. It's a little weird, but okay. Creepy masked man. What do I call you? I'm Oliver. Terran. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. And she directs you to some of the projects. She's actually got quite a few things kind of going on right now with the lumber. She's, you know, making uh, planks out of some of the fallen trees. And you see she's plotted out a few different areas with some of the lumber that she has um, as giant, you know, logs that she's getting placed into the ground, as well as keeping the fire going to try and clear out as many zombies as they can in a day. Yeah, I'll help with the fire. I just send over a fire bolt now and again. Okay. Um, I can help with planks a little too. I'll basically act as a buzzsaw uh, with sword burst. Okay. Uh, just using, like, force for that. So, do some of that stuff. All right, as you're uh, using some spells to work, she's, you know, every now and then she'll just comment of, must be nice to have all this magic to help you get your jobs done. Didn't choose it, and it comes with consequences. Uh, everything in life does, doesn't it? It does. The easier things are, the more the consequences seem to stack. Indeed. That's why I like to just get my hands dirty and make sure things are as they should be. I think I uh, can agree with that. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. And yeah, you oh, you work the rest of the day. Yeah, I mean, the rest of the day goes by. You all get your hands relatively dirty and meet this whole group of unique individuals. Throughout the day, you're introduced to the rest of your, you know, employees, for lack of a better term. Garvin Longtooth is the half-orc. He is the chief. He's basically in charge of overseeing everything. And you get the sense that he's, um fairly no nonsense and wants the job done as fast as possible but as the work day comes to an end he starts to lighten up a little bit and um, he's mostly on the case of the faded few who aren't really used to this kind of hard labor for the most part they, they do a good job and they're trying but they're just somewhat out of their element there's a half elf named Myrna who is the head guard she replaces the person at the front gate after not too long. Not a conversationalist. She checks in on you, but mostly she just stands slightly off to the side and watches you. Um, you met Bulldrick, you met Torin and Terran. Person at the gate that you first met, you find out their name is Crone. They're a dwarf. There's also Magnus, one of the dwarves helping uh, up in the tower. There's Michelle, a human female who's kind of going around and helping out wherever it's needed. And then uh, helping Terran as much as possible is a young, early 20s uh, elf. And you don't catch their name 
but they go by Sprite. Everybody just calls them Sprite. That's the group that's working on your keep. What was Terran again? Terran is a half elf. Terran and Torin. So we, uh, yeah, we, we meet all that. We get through this day, and then uh, I guess we'll rest for the night, and then kind of. How long did, was it before we needed to meet up with the king and queen again? Like a couple more days? Yeah, about three days in total. Are we just going to spend all three days here at the keep, just helping out? Why not? Like a mental reset. We'll just keep helping out um, for as long as we need to there, and then or for a couple of days, and then um, unless anything crazy happens during that time, we can always fast forward. The next day, I will summon a few earth elementals to help out with the construction. Pretty standard fare. You wake up, you get to work. Um, it feels good to have a little bit of a one you're staying in place for more than five minutes which has been rare for the three of you the six of you um greg becomes kind of the camp mascot over the next couple of days hi i'm greg hi i'm greg <laughs> just walks except for um garvin longtooth who is cannot seem to shake this creature that has taken an instant um liking to him but does not work at all and just observes everybody <laughs> and he'll be he'll just be uh sitting at a, a desk in the courtyard watching and and kind of going over all of the plans and and giving orders and giving directions helping out where needed but every now and then you just watch him studying some plans and he looks up and just barely creeping over the desk is a set of eyes and it's just hi i'm greg i know i know who you are yeah i'm greg i'm greg <laughs> and then greg just scampers away he's nice i like him it's like i'm Groot. <laughs> i am Groot. i am Groot. hi i'm greg hi i'm greg hi i'm greg and Torin's the other one who seems to be just terrified of Greg at first. And then by the, the end of the second day, where Greg is just perched in a corner up high watching, he's he they just get into a loop of saying hello to one another. And it it like 20 minutes later, they're still going at it when somebody walks by and Greg gets distracted and, and flies away. Oh, this perched in a corner like the gargoyle he is. Yep. <laughs> that makes me think of the his he. <laughs> I am Groot. I'm Batman. I am Groot. I'm Batman. I am Groot. I'm Batman. Uh, there is one more character in the camp that you don't meet until the evening of the first day, and that is the chef that has been working in the tavern. That is a human male named Norrington. Norrington. Norrington, uh, as you sit down to get a meal, um, comes out with a, a plate of food, kind of haphazardly put on a plate, um, a, you know, a, a roll that's probably a little bit tougher than it needs to be, um, some protein, and uh, some some greens, uh, basic, you know, again, hearty meal, good for keeping up your energy in all this construction, but not a great representation of what you could do in a kitchen. And he he places the food down and, and looks at the three of you. And says, oh, we have some new guests here, do we? And who might you three be? We're here to cook for the boss. I'm not kidding. I'm, just, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not being replaced, am I? No, no, no. It's just a joke. Uh, we we own the place, and we're we're just uh, checking in on everything. Oh well, welcome, sirs and madam. Welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoy your meal, and if there's anything you need, please let me know. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Mm, very well. Insight check. I don't like how this guy talks. <laughs> Go for it. 18. Yeah, he's uh, kind of slimy, but seems like his intentions are to prepare food and, you know, be creepy. 
Um, Mr. Okay. Norrington. Yes, m'lady. When you are through here, I believe I know of a place that you will fit right in. Oh, do tell! It is a charming little inn called the Pompous Lord. Are they hiring? Probably. We should get the guys that used to work there and bring them down here <laughs> to the keep. Every fun person we've met, we need to go around and rally them all up and send them to the keep. Uh, Sarah, dear, would you like me to do that? I mean, if you want to, that would be amazing, actually, right. honestly. I will be right back. You're going to use transport via plants a couple times each day and go and get everybody? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you take Norrington with you? Oh, uh, no, he's going to stay here. And I don't want to have to cook the whole time. So uh, he's gonna stay here. Okay. Uh, but after we save the world, I'll bring him up there. Aren't uh, aren't Oliver's mom and sister here? Did we meet them? When yeah. They first showed yeah. up. Yeah, they're here. Because we know that one or both of them can cook pretty well too. They ran that tavern for a while. Hmm. They're halfway decent cooks. So we have multiple people that could probably do as good as or better job than this guy <laughs> already here. Yeah, fine. I'll I'll tell Norrington that if he wants to go to the Pompous Lord, that um. You should follow me. I would follow you anywhere, m'lady. That's creepy. He needs to go. <laughs> what does my 20 passive insights say about that? You exist, and therefore, he wants to bone you. Hey. Yeah, let's get this guy out of here. Now, now, question, question. Is that specific towards her? Or is this guy that way towards everybody? He is that way, like, within 10 minutes of being there. You watch as he has truly, like, genuinely flirted with every single person that walks in. Okay. Still creepy. At least a, a, a little bit less creepy because it's not, like, targeted towards a specific thing. <laughs> he, uh, the only persons he doesn't do that to is Garvin and, um, Myrna. And he lays it on thick for Terran, but one swing of her fist, and he decides better of it. Yeah, so I take him to the I take him to the Pompous Lord, and I say, okay. Well, I'm glad that you're willing to come with me. Then let's go. It is a very short trip, and it is incredibly uncomfortable the entire time. The worst 35 <laughs> seconds of your life. <laughs> Standing way too close as you walk, you know, the the awkward trying to, like, touch your back. Oh, just, mm, I can't even say it. He is, yeah, he's a slime ball. Uh, Mr. Norrington? Yes, what can I do for you? I will have you know that the last person who tried this with me is in the ground. Noted. And he takes a giant step back. Well, at least, at least he understands. No, <laughs> that's that's something. And what I told him is one hundred percent true. <laughs> did we bury him? Uh, yeah, because he we did. I did transmute rock, and he right. went into he went into the mud, and then we tra we, we, we turned it back. It yeah. And so he's literally in the ground. <laughs> literally and figuratively. Yep. And the rest of the trip for the remainder of five, ten minutes is spent in awkward silence with a comfortable amount of distance between you. That's better. <laughs> I know when I'm not wanted. Robert the plant is like on my shoulder just uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Just all of a sudden develops the ability to grow thorns and anytime he gets just a little too close, Robert the plant just thorns. I like it. <laughs> So, who all do you travel around? Yeah, that's, that's going to be my question. Bringing to our wonderful new uh, settlement. Um. So I definitely go and get. Did I write down their names? But yeah, the guys from the Pompous Lord speak easy. Okay. I how many uh, how many uses of the spell do you have? I have two per day. Two per day. So if you did a, a, a trip on each day, you could do three trips, three separate locations. And if it's to somewhere with a teleportation circle, you could conceivably bounce through a couple other locations that way because we have free use of those. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would go and get... So one of those uses would be going to the capital. 
and I'm going to collect anybody from Taldama's family who wants to come. Okay, which ends up being your mom and brother. Um... And most of the staff. <laughs> Kate, There's... for sure. Okay. okay. Oh, yay. Um, Egan the gardener? Oh, yeah. Oh, what is her name? The other, the assistant chef. Oh, Care. Yeah, she's there too. It's basically um, your dad and his bodyguard um, that are left. Aw, I hope that's just them coming for a visit and not staying permanently, because that's so sad. They, um, after talking with your mom for a little bit, they are going to split their time as much as they can, and she would prefer to get to know you better. Well, the business is not the priority after this point. Aww. And, and if, you know, if your dad wants the, the business to be the priority, then he has his house and he has his workers and but your brother needs to know you That's... I like your mom oh she's come a long way since how she used to be who else so do you get um... people. so that was two trips I get one more I'm gonna go to that I don't want to steal Kathnia away from Bowel. Well, we and we already offered to her and she said she wanted to stay and rebuild remember so we, we told her true. about the keep and she was like, I, I need, I'm, I'm needed here, so. So I'm going to go to that, that crappy mushroom person town. Okay. And I will collect, I think his name was Owen. Oh man, we're going way back. It's like episode seven. Okay, oh, it was it. Milo. Milo. I don't get Owen. Owen was kind of a crap sack. <laughs> but, and, and the dwarf lady who gave the me The ones that work at the, uh, at the wood the mill, the wood. That was uh, Kathra Kebrek and Vistra Kebrek. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I offer them a place. Again. Okay. And Owen Milson? No, not Owen Milson. Excuse not Owen. Milo, Milo Glenfeld. The, Milo the farmer. And his son, the halflings. They're definitely on board to time for an adventure and it's safety there and they see what you all do to help out. Slowly build up a nice little community of all of our friends. And it's like when you play an MMO and you build up your guild hall. It's like uh, Fallout New Vegas and you send everyone to the Lucky 38. <laughs> so, all yeah. right. Uh, what about the other two? Anything of note that you're doing, working on? I'm trying to think of where I could go to do the same thing with Teleportation Circle. But I don't know if there's anyone we met at any of the Circle cities that we haven't already, that you didn't already collect. Wait, 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 how about this, how about this? I take you to the capital with Teleportation Circle. Yeah. So I go, I go with you to do that, and then that way you can take um, um, you can take one other trip and then bring me back on that same day. So you can get one more trip by me taking you to the capital with Teleportation Circle. Okay, fine, I, I go out to... In case there's someone else. I go to Bilthy and see if anybody wants to come. Ooh. And also get to check on how the reconstruction is going. Yeah, see how filthy it has been re rebuilt. In the what? A week and a half since the siege. <laughs> Wait, do I go to filthy? Do I go to filthy, or do we go to um, Reese? No. What about remember? So what about this town here? I can't remember the name of it was where, that we liberated, and there was that priest that was like oh, helping we could everybody. Go get the priest. We could get as many people out of there that don't want to be there anymore. Man, decisions. Because I feel like Reese, who loves fighting, would love to pound the crap out of some werewolves. Maybe. All right, it's up gonna, to you. I'm going to flip a coin. All right, at that south, I'm going to get the priest. Okay. So, yes, you're able to get Lief. And let's see, there was Cora, the half-elf at the Divine Brewery. Uh, let's see, there was Bromdar Rockjaw, the dwarf. And so, yeah, most of the people that you come across are more than happy to get out. So you end up with probably 15 people joining you there. Cool. So we can get, we they, they can one. really start they can really start building up a uh, a nice little settlement, you know, more than just the keep itself. What do we say we're going to call our place the Twilight Bastion or something like that? The Bastion, uh, the Bastion of, of Twilight. Twilight. The influx of people does cause a little bit of a chaotic moment at first, um but with the help of the three of you, plus uh, 
Garvin, you're able to quickly get people into kind of categories based on skill, based on experience, and um, on the third day, you're able to quickly get um, a small settlement right outside of the walls built up and a plan for kind of where these, you know, extra 15, 20 people are going to end up staying. At the end of the three days, it is whenever you're ready to go back to the capital and let the king and queen know that you're ready to march on Hoffeld. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll say our goodbyes. I'm gonna tell Greg uh, if I'm gonna ask him if he wants to come with us or if he wants to stay here at the keep because it's gonna be dangerous where we're going. Oh, I can stay. It's whatever you want to do. You get to make your own decisions. I'm Greg. Yeah, Greg. Greg gets to do what Greg wants to do. Oh, get into- Greg's freedom. Uh, Monster has given Dobby a suck. Greg stays. Greg protects. I'm Greg. Okay, Greg. I think that's great. Yay, Greg. Watch as Garvin is sitting in the back going, take him, take him. I want to see Garvin doing that. I'm just, like, obliviously just like... <laughs> <laughs> Greg sees your your movement, looks behind him, runs off. I'm Greg. Be sure to leave behind the the three library books for him to read. Yes, we will do that. Argyle the Gargyle, and Ooze's choose to be heroes, and Saloon's moons. Saloon's moons is the uh, is the Fifty Shades of Grey of this world. Oh, it was a children's book. It's a Not children's really book. For Greg. <laughs> the, the title just I had to. Did you say Fifty uh, Shades of Greg? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard Panda say that. It's literally no. just fifty pages but, that say "I'm Greg," and the let the font type it gets slowly shifts from black yeah, to gray. It runs out of printer ink. <laughs> it's a just a conversation between Groot, Hodor, and Greg. <laughs> well, and with that, I think that is a perfect place to wrap up for the night. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you made it through this entire episode, go get yourself a popsicle. You've earned it. Um, Don't tell him to do that. <laughs> and make sure you do all the things. Like, comment, subscribe, check out our, um, our Teespring. Go buy a shirt, people. Or a mug. Or any of the other stuff we've got. We've got good stuff. You want no, the stuff. No. And as always, may you roll those nat 20s, avoid those critical fails, and have a good night. Bye. Bye.